Welcome to another episode of FX Fireside Stream, at-home discussions between the FX team and a broad range of influencers, from macro thinkers and artists to change makers and disruptors. Hi, I'm Pooja Khandelwal, Content Strategy Manager at Fashion Snoops, and I'm pleased to be interviewing Satsuyoshi Saijo. Yoshi specializes in future design and has been advocating it since 2012. He is the program director at the Research Institute for Human and Nature and founding director at Research Institute for Future Design at Kochi Tech. Welcome to our fireside streams, Yoshi. We are so happy to have you with us today. So today we, we are going to be speaking in reference to our fall winter 22 sentiment, hope, as your work is a perfect representation of this sentiment. And to tell you a little bit about it, this sentiment addresses how hope is an ongoing process and a hard fought realization. It underlines how nearsightedness has become a plague and therefore it's so crucial for us to adopt a new thinking process keeping the future generations in mind. So with that said, to get started, could you please give our viewers your background and tell us a little bit about future design and your work in broader scope? Yeah, thank you very much for inviting me uh, to this session. And uh, uh, basically speaking, I am an economist and uh, have been doing mechanism design. Mechanism design is a field to create new social institution, a system to achieve efficiency, equity, and so on. Of course, and, uh, I can create very nice systems on academic papers. However, not sure they function well in the real setting. And then I started conducting experiments using human subjects. What I found is striking. Abstract mechanisms do not work well in a laboratory setting. So I started uh, uh, creating mechanisms or systems that we work in a la laboratory setting and found that behavior principle economics is just a part of human behavior. Economics assumes that we want to maximize our satisfaction. However, we do care about other people, of course. Then what about future generations? That's my starting point. That is amazing. So, uh, so is that what triggered you to, you know, conceptualize this idea? Was that the main trigger, or was there anything else? Um, in 2012, I gave a seminar at a University of Massachusetts on social dilemma. Uh, social dilemma means that. Uh, um, several people can cooperate together, then they can achieve a very nice situation. However, they cannot cooperate. So are there a nice way to attain some social goal? And uh, after my seminar, I mean, the, uh, after the seminar, we went to dinner and we started talking about our future. Then, uh, wow, future generation, they are not born. So, uh, this is a very huge issue. So I said, what about creating imaginary future generation among the present generations? And then Laura, who is the wife of Professor John Strandland, my former graduate student at UC Santa Barbara, told me about the Iroquois Native Americans who consider the seven generations ahead when they make their decisions. That's amazing. Now, I was so really surprised to, do, to know that, wow, such people existed in the real world. Then together with researchers from Coach University of Technology, I started the laboratory experiment featuring imaginary future people. So I'm aware that you've conducted multiple experiments to implement uh, this fundamental thinking of future design. Could you share an example with us? And also tell us what was the reaction of people who participated in this experiment? All right, and uh, let me talk about futurability first. Now, when food is scarce, 
scales. Parents feel happy by reducing their own food and giving it to their children. Am I right? Shall we extend this kind of idea to future generations beyond kinship? Yes. That, fu that future ability, and I define a future ability this way. A person exhibits future ability when he or she experiences an increase in happiness as a result of deciding and acting to forego current benefit as long as it enriches our future generations. Then I define future generation this way, designing and implementing social systems that activate our future ability to control various cycles. For a long time ago, and, uh, around 2015 or 16, and, uh, we conducted some uh, experiments using uh, students. Three people mean just one generation. Three people come to uh, in a small room. They are supposed to choose A or B. And uh, once they choose A, we can give them $36 instantaneously. Once they choose B, 27, which is better, Hoja? Yeah, definitely more, uh, more amount when you think A, of right? it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so, so mean that they can talk to, uh, uh, they can talk to, okay, choosing A or B up to 10 minutes. Yeah. However, of course, and uh, once they choose A, mean that, big amount of money, next groups or next generation A and B must be reduced by nine. Okay. So A becomes uh, from 36 to 27, B 27 to 18. However, they choose B 27. Next generation A and B say the same as before. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which one would you like to choose? Uh, well, now I'm confused. I think I'm probably going to go for option B. <laughs> <laughs> so we conduct the, uh, uh, we conduct the, uh, uh, this experiment using Kochi Tech students. Okay. Percentage of the people, a percentage of the group of who chose B is 28, 28%. Mm -hmm. However, okay. I say this way, picking or just one guy randomly out of a, three people. You are the person the, who are supposed to negotiate with other two people from future generation viewpoint. Just by instructing this way, the choice of B, percentage of the choice of B is 60%, 60, mm -hmm. from 28 to 60. Wow. That's, yeah, that's a big, big jump for sure, yeah. Yeah, so changing our social system or using imaginary future people, we can change entire outcome. So we started conducting real practice. We went to northern part of Japan called uh, Yahaba town. Yahaba is about, uh, 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 Yahaba had about uh, 28,000 people. That's a small town. Mm -hmm. Around 2015, Japanese government asked okay, every town and city to make future plan for 2060. There, we divided the people into two groups. One, think from the current to the future, about four or five people. Two groups from the current, uh, from current to the future. The other two groups, they are supposed to be imaginary future people. I say this way, you are supposed to go to 2060 using time machine. Imagine a time machine mm -hmm. without changing your age. Now please think about current policy from 2060. And uh, surprisingly, see, current generation people, they think about the uh, current problem as future problems. Imagine, see, Puja, you can mm -hmm. be an um, imaginary future person, right? Then, uh, yeah. wow, me as the current person, me as a future person. These yeah. people have been fighting inside you, right? Right. I'm not so it's sure about that. changing. It, so it sounds like it's about changing, rather bringing a new perspective, thinking from a 
different lens. We probably never look into that lens or we never really give it that importance. It's about switching to the other side a little more. And then when we try to get into their shoes, things become easier. It becomes easier for us to start that thought process. Yep. And the important thing is that once you become an imaginary future person, you started looking okay, at these people mm -hmm. uh, from higher point of view, social point of view, see, naturally. And uh, For sure, yeah. the other important thing is that uh, uh, we interviewed uh, these people who became imaginary future people about mm -hmm. half, half a year later. Then uh, okay. we thought about that. Uh, they totally forget about the, uh, the content of the session. However, they say this way, thinking as an imaginary future person is my enjoyment. Also, see, as they say this way, see, whenever I go to supermarket, PTA meeting, I naturally thinking me as an imaginary future person. That is, so, yeah, it's like, it's like getting a, com yeah, a complete change in your thought process that gets wired into you so beautifully that even your mundane day-to-day -day tasks you are thinking beyond yourself and that yeah. is so beautiful so shifting gears a little bit fashion is one of the most polluting industries in the world and it has impacted the environment it continues to do so in numerous ways it emits more carbon than international flights and shipping industry combined. So while I am sure that fashion industry can benefit from applying future design, I'm curious to hear your views. How do you envision this thinking being implemented in the fashion industry? Um, I'm not a specialist about uh, fashion, but then, uh, I can think of a Toyota just-in-time system where you can choose your favorite design, color, and so on, on the internet. And uh, you can send that kind of information and your body information to the clothing company. Then they can make it, right? Yeah. And on the other hand, important thing is, why don't you do future design session? Mm -hmm. Fashion future design among the people who are doing fashion. You can be imagine future people. Think about okay how fashion should be today from the future point of, point of view. From what I understand, future design thinking is something that businesses should apply to their policies and strategies as an investment in the future. But it also seems like this is a personal choice on an individual level of adapting to this mindset, just like what we spoke about. So what do you think about it? I mean, your experiments did lead to that, but how do you see this in the future, this change happening? Well, and, uh, we are starting to help companies conducting future design sessions. Many companies are so caught up in the present that they cannot see the present from the future. When we use a future design method, the same people start to come up with nice ideas that they never thought of before. The Research Institute uh, for Future Design at Kochi Tech has signed MOUs with local business association and has started various future design activities. We are in the process of starting future design activities with local association of corporate executives, not only for each company, but also for the future design of the region, entire region. And uh, I hope that the leaders of the world will also become future designers. In last October, I was invited to be a panelist at the T20 summit. T20 means Think 20 summit. Think 20 Summit is a kind of the preparatory meeting for the G20. Okay. And uh, I see. At the meeting, I propose a session where the world leaders would become future designers. 
and think about the current issues. Unfortunately, my proposal, my proposal was not adopted. However, I'm going to keep talking about it without giving up. So I mean, the world leaders are supposed to be future designers. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, definitely. And that actually segues into my next question. So my next question is about, are there any obstacles to this thought process? And what roadblocks could we see in this long-sighted perspective being globally embraced? Wow, this is a very tough question, but then uh, the basic obstacles are the market and the current democracy. Market is a very excellent device for realizing uh, for realizing people's immediate desires. This is not a mechanism for allocating resources with future generations in mind. Unfortunately, future generations, they are unable to express their will in the current market. What about democracy? Democracy is a system that realizes the interests of the people living today, not a system that takes future generation into account. Future generations will not be able to cast a vote under the current indirect democracy. For example, Puja, see, once you want to run for a mayor in your area, and once you say, I'm gonna ban entire fossil fuel transportation, mm -hmm. can you win? Not really, I don't <laughs> think so. That's a hard. Back. Yeah. Now, future design is a very nice device about changing market and democracy. Market and democracy are not a mechanism for future ability. On the other hand, it becomes clear that we have future ability. We do have future ability. We have been conducting some FMR, FMRI experiment, and we are revealing that the window of future ability is a right temporal parietal junctions around here. Okay. I am thinking designing social mechanism to activate RTPJ and to bind market and democracy with these mechanisms. And mm -hmm. when we conduct our many future design sessions and people who show most future abilities are citizens. Next are employers I mean the employees of public institution, and then councillors and mayors. The, the higher the rank, the harder it is for them to demonstrate future ability. In this yeah. sense, I am I do have some hope. For example, in Japan, I believe that if the Minister of Interior Affairs realize that future data is very effective and it, um, they can instruct cities and towns across country to use it. The entire Japan could be changed, right? Yeah. That's my hope. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is, this is all about that. This is about hope and uh, us moving in that direction. So yeah, for sure. And I completely agree with you. This is probably something that needs to start on an individual level. So starting at the citizen level makes complete sense. And that brings me to my last question. So what's next? Are you working on any projects to promote and implement future design thinking further? And could you please share? Sure, and uh, there are several projects. And uh, imagine a future people are not the only devices that can activate future ability. For example, it is gradually becoming clear that Future ability can be activated by using a system that discloses the reasons for decision making. Whenever top rated people make some decisions, they are supposed to reveal the reasons why the Japanese government doesn't disclose the reason for various decisions. So there is a possibility that future ability can be achieved simply by changing this. There could be many other ways to activate your future ability. You can create new type of okay, systems. You can do that. And uh, <clears throat> the other important thing is that uh, the nitrogen cycle. 
Nitrogen cycle is a very major issue following the carbon cycle. We are currently working with scientists on the future design of the nitrogen cycle. So there are many other issues. So yeah, yeah please join us. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. And I am excited. I like the fact that you mentioned, you know, this is just one door that has opened in terms of future design and there are it's endless the possibilities of thinking of our future and for future generations could be endless and there could be so many other different ways so i am excited and i will be looking out for more from you and your team with that said i want to thank you so much for sharing such valuable insights with us today and the breadth of your knowledge is simply brilliant. The entire team at FS has been so ama amazed by your breakthrough in future design. And I really want to thank you on behalf of my team. It has been my pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. That's my pleasure too. <laughs>